What's up, guys? So, way back in December, I wrote a very important letter to a very important recipient. It went something like this. Dear Santa, for Christmas this year, I could ask you for superficial gifts, like better camera equipment, a new computer, or my own apartment. But then I remembered what happened to Austin Evans, and how all those things could vanish in the blink of a freak fire accident. So in a brief moment of clarity, I made some revisions to my wish list. Instead, all I want this year is a brand new open air chassis. With it, I'll build an awesome test bed for benchmarking computer parts so I can share my findings with the world. I really don't mind which case it is, just as long as it's not made out of acrylic. That shit sucks. Your friend, always, Kyle. Much to my delight, the old man fulfilled my request in the form of a Lian Li PCT60. Aluminum construction, full-size hardware support, a carrying handle, it was the best Christmas gift I'd received in years. Since acquiring the PCT60, I've been hard at work gathering the rest of the components necessary for a testbed capable of benchmarking today's current graphics cards, SSDs, CPU coolers, and pretty much all else in the PC kingdom that can be benchmarked. Since this is arguably no easy task, I'm excited to announce that I finally have everything I need to put it all together. But before we do a little time-lapse build and show off the finished setup, let's quickly go over the individual components that will create this epic testing machine. Now I've already spoken a bit about this case, but it still deserves some sexy b-roll shots just like the rest. All jokes aside, the PCT60 from Lian Li remains one of my favorite test benches on the market for its tenacious aluminum construction and that ever so useful carrying handle since I'll definitely be toting it around from time to time. For processing, I've chosen the Intel Core i7-5930K. It has six cores with hyper-threading, overclocks like a champ, and won't experience any bottlenecking with most hardware configurations I throw at it. Not to mention it also lives on the x99 platform, which opens up windows for the latest influx of technologies like DDR4. Now to facilitate the capabilities of such a CPU, I needed a motherboard of equal caliber, so here we have the x99 UD5 Wi-Fi from Gigabyte. 4-way graphic support, dual BIOS, and dual M.2 are just some of the bells and whistles I'll be using with the finished build. And on a side note, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to review this board at some point after I've been using it for a while. My memory solution is a 4x4 16GB kit of HyperX Predator DDR4 at 2400MHz. It's efficient, it's fast, and gosh darn it, those are some pretty vicious heat spreaders. Enough said. For the task of cooling my 5930K, I've elected the Kelvin T12 from our friends at Fractal Design. I knew that I wanted a liquid cooling solution in order to hit some decent overclocks on the 5930K, but I figured a 240mm radiator would be a bit bulky for the PCT60, so I imagine this single 120 unit will work out nicely. Now I'm fairly certain that out of all the various components I'll be testing with this system, I'll likely be benchmarking video cards the most, but since Haswell E doesn't support an iGPU, I'll need a daily driver on days I'm not testing video cards. So for now I'll be using this EVGA GTX 970 for the win edition with its super fast factory overclock and 4 gig, uh, 3.5 gigabyte frame buffer. My operating system will live on this Corsair 4 series LX SSD. For now. It's not the snappiest drive by any means, and write speeds do leave something to be desired, but it is still SATA Rev 3 and should do just fine until I find a better alternative. 128GB should be plenty of space for the operating system and all of my benchmarking tools, but for video games and other large programs, I'll be using this 1TB Seagate Barracuda. Fun fact, this is the actual drive I used in my first ever PC build back in 2011. It's managed to hold out for this long, so let's hope it's still got some juice left. Now powering this entire testbed is a tall order, considering the potential for 4-way GPU testing, but I am fairly confident that the power delivery of this G1600 watt power supply from LEPA will suffice. 80 plus gold certification and what seems to be 80 plus pounds, this fully modular monster of a PSU will hopefully see me through even the most power hungry of hardware setups. Rounding out the parts list, I'll also be using an ASUS OEM optical drive to, uh, well, I probably won't be using it much, but I was sick of watching it collect dust in my closet, so now I get to watch it collect dust in the PC-260. And finally, ending on a software note, my operating system of choice is Windows 8.1 64-bit, with future plans to update to Windows 10 when it becomes available later this year, assuming it's not absolutely terrible. So those are all the parts of my testbed, and I gotta admit, I'm pretty happy with what I have so far, save for the SSD, which I might swap out later down the line. Of course, as promising as all of this seems, I won't fully know how well the system performs until I build it, so I'm gonna do that now.
is complete. Pretty straightforward, and I'm happy to report that it is booting up properly. Logically, the next step here is to get Windows installed with all the necessary drivers and programs, at which point I can then proceed to giving that 5930K a nice little overclock. But moving even beyond the realm of this system, if my plan with this build is to conduct relevant benchmarks of high-end video cards and even multi-GPU setups in the future, I'm going to need something with a few more pixels than a simple 1080 display. I need like four of those, or, or maybe just a single 4K monitor. Yeah. That sounds good. So that's my next step with getting this test bed all set up. And ideally, it'd be great if I could get my hands on a 4K monitor to review, that way I wouldn't have to pay for one, but in the event I can't secure one soon, I may just have to buy my own, like some kind of normal person. Two 4K panels I've had my eye on lately are the Acer B326HK and the BenQ BL3201PH, both of which meet my criteria for being over 28 inch IPS displays in the sub $1,000 price range. Now, needless to say, I'm having a rough time deciding between the two. So in the comments, let me know which one you think I'd be better off with, or if there's another 4K IPS you'd recommend of similar price and spec. But I have gotten drastically off topic here. So before I close out, I wanted to give a quick shout out to my sponsor for today's video, Blenda.com. Now you guys know I love YouTube, right? I mean, come on. And while you can find a tutorial on pretty much anything here, the videos you often find aren't exactly hardware Canucks quality. I mean, just the other day, Paul was trying to follow a streaming tutorial on YouTube, and I overheard him use several choice words I'd rather not repeat. He used the F word. Lynda.com, however, offers a swear-free learning experience with HD online courses led by industry professionals, so you can learn things like how to blow up your cats. In After Effects, oh god, big distinction there. At any rate, it is completely free to try, so I'm gonna put a link in the description below for those of you who like tutorial videos without someone's dog barking in the background. But that's gonna do it for now, guys. As always, toss me a like on this video before you go if you enjoyed it, and let me know what you think of my new testbed. Did I choose the right parts? Or if not, what would you have done differently? Lastly, if you like what